Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of the Fogo Life. We're still here at Tina Cannon's house. I'm Captain Ron. They've been here for days. For days? Yes, and I'm, I'm Tina Ron. Cannon. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we are back up here, and today Tina is gonna teach us all something. I have never made this dish before. I've seen it done, uh, actually version of this, but tell us what we're gonna do today, Tina. Well, down here in the South, we love our pork. So I've taken the traditional beef dish called Beef Wellington, and I've converted it to using pork tenderloin, using Swift pork tenderloins, and I'm gonna make tenderloin Wellington with Marsala mushroom sauce. Pork tenderloin, I just can't wait. Tina, since I've never made this before, mm -hmm. can you kind of walk us through the process? What are we gonna do here? Yes, I'll do that. Okay. So we're gonna open up the pork tenderloins and dry them off very well, that's key. Okay. Then we're gonna make what's called mushroom duck salve, which is very, very fine chopped mushrooms that are reduced down with some butter and some of my seasoning. This is the smoked SPG. Okay. And then we're gonna lay that on top of your pork tenderloin, wrap it in puff pastry, nice. and then cook it on the bickery egg. Now, so what do we have here, Tina? We got two of these, I know the Swift brand. What are these? Are these are pork these tenderloins? These are pork tenderloins. Okay. Yes. Do we have to do anything to them for this meal? Do we have to prep them at all? Yeah, a little like bit it? of prep here. I like, okay. like with anything, I like to dry off meat for a couple reasons. Okay. One, the spices adhere to it better, and it's also not slippery, gotcha. it's safer to handle Easy when to it's dry. That yeah. makes sense, okay. So I'm just gonna take a sharp knife and I'm using like a fillet knife or a boning knife right. and I'm put right underneath the silver skin. I got you. Just right underneath. Okay. And you can let the weight of the meat help you remove it. Yeah, I always like to kind of like sort of angle my knife up a mm -hmm. little bit just so I'm kind of scraping along the bottom of that silver skin. Yeah, perfect. So you want to have it removed just yep. like this. So it may take a minute just to remove it. A really sharp knife makes things safer yeah, and easy. easier. So you see what we're doing here, folks? We're taking all the silver skin. Okay, this stuff right here will not render down. It's real tough stuff, so it will not render down. So we want that all removed off of this. We basically get it down to just the meat, correct? Right, exactly. Okay, and that's that. Now, yeah, I noticed that they're both kind of real fat on this end and super thin on this end. So you want me to just oh, kind no. of chop that off? No, or? what we're gonna do is after I season it, oh. we're just gonna fold this up and look how uniform it yeah, is. Makes yeah, sense. how when you tie stuff. Well, you're doing a beef tenderloin. Exactly, take and then we'll just wrap it in the puff pastry and it'll be evenly cooking. So what we're saying is they take the thin end, fold it up like this in the puff pastry so you have one uniform size so that it'll cook all at the same time all throughout. Yeah. Makes sense. And now we're gonna season it okay. with our salt-based rub, which will, again, add some flavor. So this yeah. is salt, pepper, garlic, oh. but the key in this, it has a tiny bit of smoke in the salt. I love it's it. Natural smoke salt, which is give a little bit different flavor than the typical marsala. So we're just gonna give a nice coat all the way around, all the way to the end. Then so we don't wanna coat it like, I mean, major coating it, like the way we do a steak or something. No, like because it's so flavor. small, yeah. It's gonna add some flavor. Yeah. So that's actually just a, a nice coat. And then we're gonna put this in the refrigerator while we make our duck sale. To, to the, the refrigerator! refrigerator! All right, now what's our next step? So we've got the meat in the refrigerator, okay. letting it rest, and we want to keep it cold okay. and let all that flavor go in. So let's chop up all these mushrooms for the duck sale. Okay, I wish we had a barbecue prep tub. Hey! -o! Hey! I no, I like this thing because you know what? I don't want to make a mess because I know we're gonna do a lot of topping on here. So I don't want to make a mess and get everything everywhere. This will help keep everything right in one spot here. So what are we gonna chop? Mushrooms! Now we're gonna put to make this really small pieces. The both of them? I do them both. Because when you cook these down, mm -hmm. it's like spinach, you know, it just turns to nothing. Okay. Can I be clever with this cleaver? I'll be over here. There we go, Tina. Mushrooms are all chopped. Now do we go right into cooking these or is there anything else? Nope, we're gonna go ahead and grate a little bit of onion and okay. we're gonna grate it versus chop it because we okay. want it very, very fine. All right. Because we don't want to have any really texture. We just want to have so the flavor. It's almost like for this, we almost want that mush. What we, what yes. we didn't want with the mushrooms, we kind of do want we with the We do onion. want it with the it onion. Makes sense though, exactly. Like, it's kind of, Paul, we had a wonderful system for the garlic, but mm -hmm. <laughs> we're gonna kind of cook that down is really what it's gonna right. do. So, right, it's gonna cool. just meld into the mushrooms. Have at it. So it doesn't take a lot. We just need a couple tablespoons. Okay. And this is something that can be adjusted if you don't like a lot of onion or you like a lot. Okay. I'm just gonna do a couple tablespoons because this is literally gonna cook down by half. Yeah. So I got my little grater. So we have to do a little grating. A little grating, <laughs> that's right. So I'm just gonna grate and I can kind of see through here until we just have maybe a tablespoon or so. Okay. Mm, there we go. Onions. All right, that's all we need. That's all we need. Those. All right. And cool. then we're gonna take one or two cloves of garlic. Now this you can be 
you know, depends on how big they are. These are kind of big, so I'm probably just gonna use two. Two? Yep. Okay. Now these, you're gonna smash and mince as fine as possible. Okay. Let me get out of the way, you and the cleaver. All right, there we go. So. Perfect. We got our mushrooms, we got a grated onion, and we got our minced garlic. Anything yep. else? Half of a half of a stick. Okay, half of a half a stick. Yeah. Is it butter? Because everything is better with butter. With butter, that's right. So that should be all we need. So I'm gonna go get my skillet off my skillet wall. You're gonna get your skillet, your special yes, skillet? My special skillet, Good. yes. This pan is awesome. I yeah, love I, love I love cooking in this. You know, and you know, I never thought that I would use anything other than my grandfather's skillet. So yep. I got to cook at this at your yep. house with this. But I mean, it is, I mean, in one use, it was already so smooth and so slick. I, I was gonna say, what I love about this one is the flat bottom. It's mm. not dimpled, it's not rough, it's super right. smooth, you know. And here's how it went, is that we cooked biscuits in that video at my house with this, and they said, all right, you have to bring that pan to Tina now. Oh, man. Because I'm the biscuit queen, she as you know. Queen. But I do oh. like the ergonomics of the handle, and yeah. I like how I can pick this up, like when you're pouring sauces or anything like that. Right. So put the butter in. There you go. So we're going to heat this butter till it gets foamy. Now, now, now that the butter's foamy, as yep. you can see, you're yep. going to add the garlic and the onion. All right, so we can add it both at one both time. Both at one time's fine. That's the key of why you want to make sure that it's cut very fine. So stir it around, and once it gets really, really soft and fragrant, okay. we are going to add our mushrooms. You be the stirrer. Okay. And as they get soft, we'll keep adding. Excellent. So is our goal here to dry them out then? To or? get them more dry. Yeah. Okay. So once you start, they turn kind of gray? Yep. I mean, sir, we'll add some more. Add some more, okay. This is why we add a half of a half a stick. Gotcha. Because it would be way too liquidy. Sure. You commanded me to cook all the water out of it. Yeah. So look, this is what we got here. Okay, we got this nice dry paste here. Like mm -hmm. it's still, I mean, there's still a touch of moisture, but we cooked all the loose water out of it. If I hold it like this, there's no water or anything draining down there. So we got nice, beautiful, dried out. What's it called? Duck cell. Duck cell. It's with an X, by the way. No, mm -hmm. it's CK. Not like a quack quack. No, no quack quack. It's not L ducks, it's duck cell. All right, cool. I like it. I just want to take the entire spoonful and just start eating it like that. That's the well, problem. Well, I'll tell you what, let's taste it. Because okay. remember, we added no salt, no pepper. Correct. So I just want you to taste, because if you add salt to mushrooms, it gets more liquidy. It okay. draws the oil, the, right. excuse me, it draws the liquid out. Moisture's out, yeah. So I want you to taste it. And this is this is preference of how much salt you like. Remember, we've salted the outside of the meat. It needs salt. So I would add a little bit of that SPG. And do it to eat whatever your level of salt is. So we can do a little bit at a time here. Yeah. I think it'd be a little bit more. A little more? I would say probably for this about a teaspoon. Okay. If you That's probably salt. about a teaspoon. And right you're there. probably perfect. Stir it all around. And that just is going to really drive in that little hint of smokiness from the smoked salt in the smoked SPG. Love it. And then if you want to taste it again, you go for I it. I do want to taste it again. Okay. Not that. Oh, oh, oh. just a little bit. Okay. okay. Oh yeah, no. way better. No. I'll, I'll eat after you. Oh man, wait, oh man, is that good? So the key now is to let this cool off. And if you want it to cool quicker, I would just put it in a plate or a dish to let it cool off. I would use like a you know ceramic plate or what? Don't get a plate. Okay. <laughs> we just want it to- to you notice the way she dispatched me? That's go, right. go, go get, get a plate, a plate. yes. So this will help it cool a lot quicker because you don't want to put this hot duck cell on puff pastry. You want it to be cold. Right. And wh why is that? Because it'll actually start to cook the puff pastry? Or right. What? Puff pastry is predominantly butter. Yeah. So you don't want it to melt it. Gotcha. Makes sense. So there we go. So from what I can see, yep. duck cell is done. It's actually all cooled off in the refrigerator. What's our next step? All right. You're going to get our puff pastry okay. and the duck cell out of the refrigerator okay. and then we're going to... Prep our pot. All right. We put yep. them back in the refrigerator earlier because we want it to be nice and cool. When you work with puff pastry, it needs to be cool. Very cool. Terrible. So I'm going to open up our puff pastry. Okay. Do we have to like flour the board or anything like that? Nah. No. Okay. We're going to work so quick, we don't need to. Work fast. Look fast. So we want to be very quick about it. Okay. And see it's wrapped with paper in between. Yep. I like to handle it with the paper in between. Okay. Touch it as little as possible. I have heard this before. Yes. Okay. So now we've got it. Look, it's still, it's still cold and yep. firm. Good. So I want you to put some duck cell on here okay. and leave at least an inch all the way around. Okay. So just kind of set it in there and just like a thin layer, right? We don't yep. want it to be a... 
just a thin, thin layer because remember it's going to encapsulate the pork. Right. When thin but kind of solid layer, right? Exactly. Am I doing good here? All right, I think we're there. All right. So you can put it this way. Since okay. it's a little bit big, we're right. actually going to put it this direction. Okay. And now you're just going to wrap it. Like, okay. Wrap it like a package, but you want to do oh, no, <laughs> not no, that no, kind no. of wrap. Oh, okay. No. I, see. I would fold the ends up. Okay. Pull the ends up mm -hmm. first. Mm hmm. Okay. And then the sides. And that's it. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then pinch it together so it looks cute. All right. Almost like a little package. A little empanada. Yes, like an empanada. Perfect. All right. Then do we do anything to this? Do we coat it with anything? Yep. Do we I'm going to. Are we going to make a fancy design on it or anything? Like you, that? We can with a knife if you want to, but first I'm going to do an egg wash. Okay. That just gives it a nice, beautiful color. All right. Now, with the egg wash, do you use water or just egg? I've seen it done all different ways. Some people mix water. I just use the straight egg. Straight egg, you beat it. Mm hmm. So we're going to crack it in our little dish. It's so fancy. And you want to make sure you beat it and incorporate the yolk and the white very well. So if you have any openings where the puff pastry didn't seal, this will help that. Ah, uh, okay. My side sealed perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, okay, whatever. Here, we'll just fix it. Just say. All right. Okay, so you kind of put it on that nice, decent, thick coat, basically. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry, that gets you dirty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and see, underneath so that little flap, that, that nice helps way. glue it down. Yeah. yeah. So it kind, of, it kind of works as a glue, really. Yeah. Cool. Now, if you want to cut a fancy design, now is the time if you would like to. I think that's good. You just want to make indentions. Indentions. Yeah. I have the best of indentions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you really, you know what? Let's make it look really fancy. Okay. Oh, SPG on top? Just a little Goodness. bit. It's okay. going to give it like a little crust. We're going completely off record here, right? Yeah. Off, 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 off script. There we go. Beautiful. So that's actually just ready to go on the egg now, right? Yeah. We'll All go. right. I think we should head out to the egg. We're going to light it. What temperature are we going to cook this at? Three, just like you with the oven. 350. So right. if you're cooking on an egg or in your house, if you prefer to do it in your house, 350. It's exactly the size. So we're going to treat our outdoor ceramic cooker, our big green egg, just like you would your oven. If you're cooking it in the oven inside, Cook at the same temperatures outside, right? You're ready. All right. Let's go. To the to egg. The egg. Yeah. So we're back out here by the grill area. Now we were just talking about the meat and that how we want to kind of treat it like our indoor oven. So we right. want our charcoal to be as clean as possible. So we have some in there that was already burned, but there was no fat drippings on it. It was a clean burn. So okay, we're going to use good. that. So we're going to put a couple starters right yep. in here in the blaze ball. I fluffed them up a little bit for you're, you. You're a good fluffer. <laughs> Hey, if you're kind of wondering why I was talking about needing clean charcoal for this, because we're working with puff pastry. Now, breads, things like that, doughs, they really tend to soak in a lot of smoke. So we want as clean fire as burning as possible. That's why if you have charcoal that's already had fat drippings on it, things like that, it's going to produce more smoke and it's going to kind of create an acrid smell. So with something like this, when we're working with pep, uh, puff pastry or doughs, you want to keep it a nice, clean fire. Charcoal is all ready, so we're going to put it in here. We're going to cook this indirect, all right, because we don't want any direct flavor because we want to cook it just like an outdoor oven. So we've got our cast iron grates in there. we got our deflector in there. We're going to get it to 250 degrees. We're going to make sure that it's burning nice and clean. No smoke coming out of here. 350. 350. Did I say 250? 350, not 250. 350. Tree fitty. I'm so excited. Like we're getting closer. We're getting closer. Now, what we have here is the two that we made in here. If you look inside of here, what we did is we have a pizza stone that we heated up with the grill. So it's at full temperature, which is 350 degrees. I didn't make that mistake twice. <laughs> so, Tina, you want to have the honors? Just put it right on there. Yep. Now, you were saying about par parchment paper. They don't need a pizza stone necessarily. No, right? uh -uh. you can put them on parchment paper or if you have a preferred pan you like to cook in. Okay. I just like to use my pizza stone, and I've had this pizza stone for like 23 years. Wow, okay. I know. Can you put it right directly on the grates or? I probably would not. Okay. Yeah, because. So it's something in between. Yeah, well, something in between. All right, good, good. So which you told me that we probably have about maybe a half hour cooking yep. time or something like that. Good. We're going to use our uh, instant read thermometer. We're going to check in a little while and we'll see where we're at. Yep, we're set. Cool. You notice too? No smoke coming out of here. Nice, clean fire. No smoke coming out whatsoever. So while the meat's cooking on the grill, we're going to make the sauce. But where is my pan that was here? Here it is. Where do I put it? Oh gosh, put it right on the eye. You didn't wash it, did you? No. 
Good. Um, you can ask Lynn. I've never washed a pan in my life. Oh, boy. <laughs> so part of the recipe is not washing this pan because you've got the residue from the garlic and the onion and the butter that is already in here. So you want to keep that flavor, which is called Fond, F-O-N-D. That flavor. I'm very fond of that. Get out of here, Lord. So we're going to heat the skillet up. We're going to add the other part of the butter, which is a quarter of a quarter stick and let it get foamy. And once it gets foamy, we're simply gonna add some more mushrooms and we're gonna use slices this time because we wanna have a nice texture to the sauce. We're gonna use a little more of the SPG instead of salt, pepper, garlic, separate. We're gonna use that. And then we're gonna deglaze the pan with some Marsala. Quit, Ron. Nobody drinks Marsala. Butter's melted and foamy. Add those shrooms. Add them in. Now, when I do my shrooms like this, I kind of stir them around, get them burnt, and I let them sit. For That's a while. right. Just you want to let them get brown. a little bit brown. So that, depending on your stove and what kind of pan you're using, probably take about five minutes. Our mushrooms have really started to caramelize a little bit, so now we're going to add the marsala. I'm going to let Ron do that. Okay. Now, how much? How much sauce do you want? How thin do you want it? So I would add. I would add almost a half a cup. Okay, so I like mine really marsala-y. Okay? Marsala-y. So, marsala yes. That's a word, um, you know. Here we go. Ooh. Smells so Smell good. Smell that. All right. So now we're going to cook this and reduce this down so that that marsala thickens, right? Right. It's going to thicken, and then when we add butter, okay. it will thicken more. And so it's going to basically emulsify it. Is that exactly. Correct? All right. Exactly. Most like it's just like taking two different things to get normally don't go together, oil and water, and combining them. Can I hit it with a little SPG? Yep. Yeah. Hit it with that. So we're just gonna go a little light, right? Yep. That should be plenty. Yeah. Two. Great counting. You want one more? I think we're good. So cold butter in the sauce thickens. A lot of people don't believe that, but it does. Not only that, it makes it silkier. Mm -hmm. and it gives it a really nice texture. Yeah, nice, what they call mouth feel. Mouth feel, exactly. You see how it's not that thin like it was before. Yep. It has a little bit of texture to it. And guess what? Sauce, Sauce is done. done. So we're set. We're going to just right. turn this off Cool. while we go get our meat. We should probably go head outside and check out the meat because it's probably getting close to done already. All right, we're going for about 25 minutes, so I'm pretty sure we're done here. Wow, look at those, mm -hmm. Tina. They look awesome. 150 on the nose. Was that what we're looking for, about 150? Yep. All right, awesome, awesome, Tina awesome, 20. yeah. All right. Look at that. Is that gorgeous or what? All right, so we'll put one here. That egg wash gives it really nice color. No doubt about it. Look at that. I mean, that is just gorgeous. The beautiful brown on there. That is beautiful. Tell you what, while we're doing that, I'm going to put our sauce right on here. We might even heat that up a little bit. How's yeah. that sound? So now, does this have to sit and rest at all? I'll let it rest for about 10 minutes. Okay. So that'll be good because that'll heat up while we're doing this. All right. Woo. We are on a We're like butter, baby. We're on a roll. And I'm hungry. I'm hungry, too. Well, Tina, I gotta tell you, this looks absolutely fantastic. The pork is juicy. The mushrooms are so beautifully done. Everything looks gorgeous. I'm kind of hoping that it tastes half as good as it looks. Cheers. So here we go. Cheers. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This mushroom duck cell is just absolutely amazing. That is so good. I mean, Mushrooms and butter and onion, come on, yeah. not bad, you know, but. And a little SPG. Yeah, a little SPG didn't hurt at all. Oh my goodness, I am super impressed here. Pork Wellington. Guys, pork Wellington, I highly, highly advise it. Try and do it where there's no flies too, okay? Yeah. But Tina, once again, you crushed it. I've never done this before. I'm so excited. Thank you for showing me how to do this. You're welcome. This is going in the holiday rotation, I can tell you Good. that. Yeah. All right. Do you make this a lot or what do you do? Hey, this is a recipe I made up myself, so outstanding well listen if you like what you saw here want to try something out to remember to subscribe to the fogo channel join us okay join the fogo family leave us a comment below do you think that pork wellington's a great idea the answer is yes yes so if you think it's not you're wrong but anyway 
That's everything we've got for this week's episode. I want to thank Tina again for showing us how to do this and for being a part of our video here. Um, remember, subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment down below. Tell us what you think, all right? And until then, remember to get out and grill and we'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life. Ron and Tina out. out.